this is never going to get patched. And the reason for that is very simple. Because it has always been like this in the 5th edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons, the 5th edition has never been balanced. But uh, hey, it's fun. I do have to warn you, if you're going to try out this build, you're going to feel like cheating. Yeah, the game gets so easy like that. And uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what can we say? We like broken things right here. Like I said, you're going to feel like cheating. You are going to feel like everything is too cheesy, too easy. But no, everything is legit. And you don't have to worry about any of this being nerfed anytime soon. Now this is going to start to work at level 6. But it's just going to get stronger and stronger as you move forward through the game. So yeah, let's just cut to the chase. Let's begin. Let's begin with. I'm sorry about <laughs> that. Let's begin with level one because there are some little changes, clarifications that I would like to point in here, and uh, we are going to be choosing a sorcerer, of course. The thing is that your race doesn't matter. I always get that kind of comments in my comment section down below. Larian changed the ability scores, but. Uh, for the min max not to not to care that much yes there are definitely most certainly going to be races that are going to be better for min maxing but if you are that kind of player that you like a human yet that you like a dragonborn just take the race that you like the skeleton is just going to work better it's certainly going to perform better with like kind of different races because of the racial spells but we're not going to be focusing on racial spells that much in this thing another thing what this is going to be amazing for is that we're not going to have itemization in this video because this is just going to be so broken that we're not going to be uh, using items at all that is not to say that you cannot use items by all means if you have items out there that you find nice that you want to use by all means you can use them but so let's begin with the with the class we're going to begin with the sorcerer and then the sorcerer we are going to have cantrips for this specific purpose you can build it towards the element that you would want build in for this specific purpose this specific showcase i'm going to build a fire sorcerer which is going to be using firebolt for cantrips it's also nice to have blade ward and mage hand is just overall amazing utility spell for exploration and whatnot. Those are the things that I would mostly advise for you to recommend at early levels of the game. You are certainly going to need something to deal damage other than your cantrip, which is going to be nice. But a magic missile is just 100% chance of being able to hit the enemy, so early levels it's always amazing to have this little thing right here. Now, on this specific case scenario I am going for the draconic bloodline. Because I like the extra hit points that we are going to get from that. And also we're going to receive a little bit of a bonus by choosing one specific bloodline that I am going to be choosing right here. I am going to go for the, uh, let's see, let's go for the Draconic Ancestry Fire. It's not changing in here, I do not know what is, why is this happening. Hold on a little bit. Ah, managed to fix it. Anyways, for the uh, Draconic Bloodline, we're also going to get a little bit of a... some scales right here that are going to be flashy, they are going to be nice, you are not going to need those things. Now, for the abilities, the Sorcerer is going to be drawing its power from Charisma. We also want to have lots and lots of Constitution, which is not allowing me to play around with this thing. This game is a little bit bugged for me right now. But anyways, these are the ability scores that we want to be using. We want dexterity for the initiative and also for the armor class. We want constitution because we're always going to be concentrated with this character. And we want charisma as high as possible. Now a little, little quick answer as well for people that are curious about why do I choose 17 uh, as my stats when you shouldn't real when you shouldn't a lot of people is going to tell you that you shouldn't be doing so well that is not necessarily entirely true the thing is that sometimes you are going to get quests you're going to get items you're going to get ability score changes there's all kind of different things that you're going to be able to have to increase those little things so. I always tend to go as high as possible because like for example you have the quest for ethel where you can change it to 18 and if you were, were to be on 16 that would be completely useless because you're still one point away so my advice is always go as high as possible on your main stat for main damage because there's always going to be many means of increasing that and the higher that you are right there right now the higher chances that you are going to get to increase it later on in the game. At level 2, we are going to receive another spell. I usually advise for you to go with Mage Armor because it's going to last until long rest and it doesn't require concentration. 
So, it's always amazing because we are squishy, we're sorcerer, and we are going to need to be bypassing those damages that the enemy is going to be doing to us because we want to keep lots and lots and lots of concentration. And then we're going to have the passives, and this is what, are, what is going to break our class of sorcerer bases, its magic and the meta magic. We're going to have twin spell, and also later on in the game we're going to get a new passive for meta magic. Right now we're going to have twin spell, and then we're going to have distant spell. At this point, at level 2, the class is still not broken yet, and that is basically what we're going to have. At level 3, we are going to receive a one more spell slot. I usually advise for you to use Misty Step because it's going to be a level 2 conjuration spell. It's going to allow you to move throughout the battlefield without any kind of issue. And it's always amazing. It's also from a bonus action. So it's nice to have that thing. And then we're going to have another passive. And this is what is going to finally... Uh, break our character our sorcerer right here we're going to be taking quicken spell and this is basically going to allow us to consume three sorcery points to be able to change one specific spell to be a bonus action meaning that you can cast one high level spell uh, without a cost potentially at the end of the build we're going to be able to cast three level spells like you were able to see at the beginning of the video in just one single turn now at level 4, at level 4 we're going to get another cantrip, I usually like to use Minor Illusion because it's very useful, especially in exploration, so yeah, it's a kind of a utility little, little thing that it's always nice to have as for spells, right now we don't have heavy hitters, uh, so we're going to be using Scorching Ray. And if you combine this with your meta magic, this is going to allow you to deal that much more damage while you are leveling up because the BL hasn't been fully established as of now and it's still not as deadly as it's supposed to be. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. We're not going to go all the way to level 8 on this specific showcase because this is for early level, level for breaking the game at early level. We're going to stop at level 6. But there are going to be two features that you are going to be able to use. It's going to be one at level 4 one at level eight and depending on your needs this is going to be different the thing is that we're always going to be concentrated so we want to have war caster for us to be able to bypass to take advantage on the saving throws to maintain the constitution on a spell so it's always very important to have war caster but we're also going to need quite a lot of damage and a lot of damage is going to come from our elements depending on the kind of sorcerer that you're building either you're building a coal sorcerer a fire sorcerer a lightning sorcerer depending on what kind of sorcerer you are going to need this to increase the amount of damage that you deal so it's going to be a bummer, we're not going to have the ability improvements and you are going to have the concession on whether which one do you want to have first. Do you want to have the elemental adept first or do you want to use the warcaster first? I usually like to go first for the warcaster because uh, yeah, I, I usually like to, to be concentrated with the spell that we're going to be getting on the, on the next, next level. And this is where things are going to get spicy. At level 5, we are going to get haste. And basically, what we are going to do is that at the start of every fight, before you start any fight, you are going to cast the twin meta magic. The twin meta magic is going to allow us, allow us to cast two spells that target one specific unit. And it's going to be allowing us to cast haste on two... Uh, on two characters so basically you can choose you you can choose a different character you can choose the thing is that we're going to have double haste and then this is going to be very important this is going to be the most important steps at level five you notice that we didn't replace any spells previously here we are actually going to replace spells because we're going to remove our chromatic orb or depending on what kind of spell at this point magic missile is really not that useful to us anymore we're going to replace that to add our fireball and this is where our build is finished beyond this point you are just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and filthier and deadlier and it's just going to be chef's kiss a broken little thing that is going to trivialize the game for you this is easy mode even on tactician mode this is just a joke this is how broken this thing is now let's talk about a little bit on how the build works at level 5 we are going to have, we're going to be fully established. Beyond this point we are just going to get stronger. The thing is that before you start any fight, like I said, you're going to cast haste. 
picture the possibilities that you are going to have right here. The, the thing about this thing being broken is that if the rest of your crew also have broken meals, like the ones that I have posted here on the channel, I have planned one for my paladin, but like for example, the cleric, the thunder cleric, the tempest cleric, it's a very broken little thing. Picture that, also barbarians. Barbarians are damage dealing beasts, and that is amazing. So, if you don't want to haste yourself and you want to just be outside from the battlefield, it's something that you can most certainly do, if you wanted to. And picture the possibilities. A Tempest Cleric, the whole thing about a Tempest Cleric by being broken is that you can, you can cast the Cold Lightning spell. Cold Lightning spell is not going to cost you any kind of resource provided that you are concentrated. If you have concentration, you have unlimited amount of uh, being able to cast Cold Lightning. If you haste a Tempest Cleric that has Cold Lightning, you can call Tempest twice on one single turn and those casts that you are going to have they are not going to cast any and not, they are not going to cost I'm sorry about that they are not going to cost any kind of resource and if they're not going to cost any kind of resource then me, that means that you can spam it endlessly and endlessly and endlessly in any single turn for a paladin, imagine how amazing it is for a paladin to be able to smite the, th the hell of things over and over and over and over again as for a sorcerer, imagine being able to cast two fireballs, or depending on the element that he chose, imagine to be able to cast two of the level 3 or level 4 spells that are going to deal huge and lots of amounts of damage in a huge area of effect, and still be able to cast another one because of the quicken spell. And that is basically how it works. Before you start any fight, you haste yourself and then you're able to use the quicken spell. Remember that we use this thing? The quicken spell is going to allow us to cast one of these little beautiful things that we have for free. And then after that, because of the haste, you can cast two of those things for free. Well, not for free, it's going to cause you. And the thing is that haste is going to give you a, a, a debuff that is going to be really bad once it's over. But do you really think that fights are going to last that long with this thing? Hell no, there are many fights, many, many, many fights of very complex enemies that you can end in one turn. If you haste your sorcerer, you cast three of those AoE high tier spells, and then you give more haste to your paladin, to your warrior, to your barbarian. The enemy is not going to survive that long against this thing. One little thing that you need to have in mind is that it's going to consume quite a lot of sorcery points, it's going to consume quite a lot of your spell slots, it's not going to care that much on the Tempest Cleric, but for some other classes it is going to actually be consuming quite a lot of spells, so yeah, it's going to heavily rely on camp supplies, and you know what, I, I think that, no, I think it doesn't work, guys, I... Uh, I think that uh, no, we don't have enough camp supplies. I'm sorry uh, that the build is useless. There's not enough camp supplies in this game to be able to be resting after every fight. I'm sorry, forgive me. Yeah, this is this is not going to work. I'm sorry anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing that this game every every time every single box it's always throwing you camp supplies like if it was from a free government campaign <laughs> so yeah there you have it it's a beautiful amazing build it's broken but use it with a measure all right this is going to break the game and this is going to be yeah it's going to trivialize fights so if you want to have a bit of a challenge this is not the build for you if you like the content, like and everybody super appreciate it. No one's told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. I will be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye. <laughs>